Hello and welcome to this skills video and this time we're going to be looking at uh, an essay question um, and having a walk through an answer and trying to um, show you um, what's good about it and perhaps what can be improved. So this is the question that uh, students answered and this question was answered in time conditions um, live by a student with neat handwriting um, and some sense of what they were doing uh, which are the two reasons why I've picked this essay to show you. Um, it's an essay off the uh, Mao's China Unit 2 course, but these skills and principles go for any essay um, in any course, uh, in any of the, the any of the units that are studied across all three routes uh, at Simmons. And the first thing, uh, and I've pasted it into uh, Smart Notebook so that we can highlight things as we go. And just have a quick look at the question before we get started. How accurate is it to say that the main consequence of the Cultural Revolution was the destruction of Chinese culture. Now, this is quite unusual uh, as questions go because it's a consequence question. Um, and so um, there aren't many of these around uh, set by the exam board. This was set by the exam board in 2016 for the AS paper, but the same principles again apply to the A-level one. So the first thing to say is that this is a consequence question. And look, you see here indicated by the word main, that it's a question which is expecting you to compare one, one particular consequence to several other, uh, well, at least one other consequence, um, but hopefully more than one other consequence. And the consequence that it's suggesting is the destruction of traditional Chinese culture. So we would expect in, in any answer here that they, after the introduction, that the first paragraph deals with the, the destruction of traditional Chinese culture and weighs up um, whether that happened and, and to what extent uh, traditional Chinese culture was destroyed by the Cultural Revolution. And so that's the third thing to just uh, highlight here, that this is an essay focusing on the Cultural Revolution, which is the third of four topics um, in the in the Mao's China unit, uh, unit two, um, which uh, means that it's, it's, it's quite um, straightforward for the, for the student to know what they're talking about. So that's the that's what we're expecting then. Uh, we're expecting to see an instruction and a conclusion, and in between, uh, a paragraph on the de destruction of traditional Chinese culture and at least one, hopefully two other consequences suggested. We're going to have a quick look now um, at the mark scheme. Um, this is the mark scheme that I've uh, uh, copied from the posters that are in most rooms, and um, it just reminds you of the things that we're looking for in the essay. First of all, they're expecting you to know stuff. Um, and you can see here just, just kind of the things we picked out that some understanding is going to be in the lower grades. Sufficient knowledge is up here in the kind of most main grades, sort of A to C. And then A star, you know, enough sufficient knowledge to respond fully. And I would pitch this as comprehensive knowledge. Over here, they want you to be well organised in what you're putting. Let the general trend of the argument is clear. Um, but up here, it's generally well organised. Um, and in fact, uh, here in level five, so if we can move it up, it's communicated with clarity and precision. Um, so that's what we'll be looking to assess. Uh, these two are fairly straightforward. You just have to know your stuff here, and that takes a bit of revision and effort, but you know, should be manageable by everybody. This is also well manageable, it's just structural and just writing in a clear way. In between are the two sort of not higher skills, but more tricky skills. The blue one is about judgment. Um, and this is reaching reaching a conclusion, but also weaving that judgment in through your answer. So here you can see that your judgment has weak substantiation. Um, and there's an attempt to establish criteria for judgment. So this means really that they, they've they sort of tried to suggest a reason for their conclusion, but there is, it's a bit sort of flimsy and it's not really something that they've, it comes across as being a bit last minute, that they haven't really thought much about it. Here in level four, valid criteria for judgment established and applied, that they've got a reason for it and that that reason is clear and uh, hopefully that they're starting to weave that reason through the answer. So it, we're looking for whether judgment is not just present in the conclusion, but whether it's something that's been built up to through the analysis that's gone on. And that's even um, pushed further here that the relative significance of criteria are evaluated. And in this particular question where we're looking at, at different factors or different consequences of the uh, of the cultural revolution, we'll be looking to weigh them against each other and just have a sense of the the relative importance or the the yeah the ways in which you might think of 
those consequences being laid out. So that would be the ideal. Um, and that's, that's the judgment, but also like the judgment within the paragraphs too, not just the conclusion. Uh, and then here in the, in the yellow column or the orange column um, is the analysis. The analysis is, is explaining. So um, this is about taking that evidence of the destruction of traditional Chinese culture and saying in what ways that's a consequence and how um, how uh, how that's declined due to the cultural revolution. It shouldn't just be plonked in. In this is where you explain it. Um, and uh, look here, the analysis, the relationship between key features. We may see some overlap between the consequences. We we'll have to see. It depends a bit on on the essay as to whether that's um, applicable um, or how easily that's applicable. Um, and then in Level five, sustained analysis um, of the relationships between the key features. Uh, and that is that, that this is something that obviously that's, that's flowing through the answer, that they're explaining um, all the way through. So let's have a read through. Um, and what we'll do as we go, I'll try and pick out the highlights. Um, I'm not going to read out, uh, or maybe I will. I will read through, actually, so um, uh, just to make sure that everybody can read it. So the Cultural Revolution was launched in May 1966. It was initially an internal purge of the party, but it developed into a national mass campaign. So this bit here at the start um, is, uh, and we'll try and highlight them or underline them at least in the sort of right ways. This bit here is just establishing a little bit of context. This is quite a nice way of starting an essay, just the first sentence um, to a to get you started but also to show that you know what we're talking about that the, the, in this case the cultural revolution oh it's launched in may 66 what was it oh, it was an internal page of the party but it did develop into a may, uh, national mass campaign the destruction of traditional chinese culture was a major physical consequence of the revolution however the societal changes which were often permanent for example the huge loss of life should be considered at the main consequence of the Cultural Revolution. It could also be argued that the resurgence of Mao and the growth of his personality cult was an equally significant factor, but it cannot be compared with either of the other two, as Mao's death in 1976 finishes that. Oh, well, this is already uh, extremely good, isn't it? Because what we've got here are uh, it's good organisation. In fact, you can see where I've already marked this particular bit, uh, the resurgence of Mao, the loss of life, and the destruction of traditional Chinese culture, each picked out um, as factors. And we're going to expect to see paragraphs on each of those underneath. Um, and uh, so that's organization. And then here, uh, we've already got some judgment going on, which we're going to do in blue, um, should be considered the main consequence. Uh, and also that this one here, that they're already judging the personality cult, the resurgence of Mao. Um, it can't be compared to the other two um, as that Mao's death finishes that. So there's already a sense of why is that not the biggest one? Oh, that's not the biggest one, because it might have been a consequence at the time, but it's not a long lasting consequence. Um, and there's already some sort of sense of distinguishing between physical consequence um, and here a societal change that the, the loss of life is more important than the destruction of um, physical elements of, of culture. Now, you might not see it that way yourself, but this is reasoning that is establishing that criteria for judgment already. That is, uh, that's a really good introduction. And that shows the, the purpose of an introduction is really to sketch out where you're going. It's got like a good trailer of your um, answer because already, we're beginning to think, oh, yeah, we know what's coming up. And we're, now we're kind of waiting to be persuaded of these points. Let's have a look down then. So the first paragraph we'd expect to be on the destruction of traditional Chinese culture. And there it is. And that's nicely headlined here. So we know what that paragraph is going to be about. Actually, let's just flip to the. That's the bottom of that paragraph. Let's flip here. The permanent this is the next paragraph. The permanent or at least emotionally permanent or at least emotionally damaging changes to societal structures are more significant, were more significant than the destruction of tradition. So there's a bit of 
judgment there as well as organization. And then here, the next paragraph. One could also argue that the cultural revolution led to an increase in Mao's personal power. So that's poor highlighting, but what you can see there is the start of each paragraph. It's really easy to see. We haven't had to read much at all to see that organization flow through. And that's that final common of, co column of, yeah, is this well organized? Yeah, this is really well organized. It's very clear what they're going to argue. And it's very clear how that's laid out. Let's, uh, let's have a look at this first paragraph and see what they're saying. So the destruction of traditional Chinese culture was definitely a significant consequence. So there's nice use of that word significant, not saying that this is insignificant. This is this is a big consequence, um, but they just don't think it's the biggest. In fact, let's have a quick look back at those other paragraphs as well. More significance. And. Uh, it could also argue. That it's uh, significant, um, which gives a sense like, well, yeah, it kind of is. So, again, just there in that opening sentence of each one. They've really um, been very clear about already that evaluation of what's the hierarchy here. Oh, this one's quite big. The next one's the biggest. And the third one's like, well, you know, you could argue. It gives a sense of it being less important. Still important, but less important. So the destruction of traditional Chinese culture, we'll get past the first two lines in a moment, was definitely a significant consequence in terms of the physical damage. So this is the part of the analysis. Oh, why was it a consequence? Why was it important consequence? Oh, well, because it physically damaged um china i guess in in the in the larger scheme thing uh for instance uh for example rather two-thirds of seven thousand places of historical and cultural importance in beijing were destroyed and over a hundred thousand homes were broken into in search of old artifacts so this is a nice just bit of uh precise evidence that they're using to show uh that they know that this traditional chinese culture was um, uh, destroyed. This damage was unrepairable and shows evidence of, uh, shows the evidence, their methods for destruction of culture. Maybe I've misread that. Anyway. However, one third of places, however, so here we have some evaluation signaled there. A third of the historical places in Beijing were not harmed or protected, such as the Forbidden City. Uh, this reluctancy shows that there was still an awareness of its cultural importance. Additionally, there were signs that traditional Confucianist values were being left behind. The targeting of older party members and intellectuals by the Red Guards demonstrates this. Oh, yeah, sorry. So this is a Confucianist values were being left behind. That's another bit of knowledge that is then being used here to show that how traditional Chinese culture was being destroyed and the persecution of those older members shows up. The famous playwright. So let's have a look at an example of this. Scroll down. The famous playwright Lao Shi was persecuted and then led to commit suicide and then led to commit suicide. Respect for one's elders was no longer obligatory. However, cultural values shown to be largely ingrained into people, uh, as shown by the public and the party's reaction to the deaths of uh, Joe and Mao. So this is great. Again, um, they're saying here that some stuff was destroyed, but not everything. Um, the Confucianist values being left behind. This is that respect for the elderly in particular, respect for your seniors um, in particular. Oh, yeah, that that was uh, uh, traditional Chinese culture was damaged in that sense, because here's an example of someone amongst many who was persecuted. But they're saying, yeah, but not everyone was. And when Zhou Enlai, the uh, foreign secretary for a lot of Mao's time and power, and Mao himself in 1976 died, um, both of them were showing huge veneration. Um, as examples of uh, of this sort of Confucianist uh, respecting your elders um, and uh, superiors, your seniors, respecting them as value. On the eve of the Qingming Festival, 
uh, which is a traditional bed morning, around 2 million people, oops, sorry, this is when Joe and I died, uh, visited Tiananmen Square to commemorate Joe and the embalming of Mao's body, oh, of course, yes, uh, is similar to how the Chinese would have treated a deceased emperor. Although there were large amounts of physical destruction of Chinese culture, Uh, and buildings. This cannot be viewed as the main consequence as intangible tradition remained. So this is the argument here that actually, yeah, there was destruction, but actually a lot of stuff was left behind. And you can see here that we've got quite some really good and um, precise examples, clear examples um, of evidence. Um, it's well organised. There's an argument flowing through this paragraph. We haven't done much yellow, have we? The analysis, they're explaining how things had been. Um, it's very clear that they understand how that destruction had taken place. Uh, so this here is respect for elders was no longer obligatory. That's explaining it. There was still an awareness of cultural importance. Uh, that shows their methods. That's sort of saying that these are their methods. And then here, these things are largely ingrained into people. This study uh, analysis is showing like where, where is this happening and where is this, um, how is this important? So let's pop back, we're gonna look at, it'll be quick on the other two paragraphs. So I imagine the same sort of qualities are shown. That actually in many respects, and I wouldn't wanna say this uh, to too many students to their face, but you don't need to read the whole essay to see the qualities of it. Here, we've already seen, I think that they've got su certainly sufficient knowledge, if not, uh, that they're gonna show that they've got the knowledge to respond fully to this comprehensively. There's a limit to how much knowledge you can show in 45 minutes and you don't wanna overload, but there's there's an impression here that this student isn't uh, isn't scratching around for knowledge, that the quality of their knowledge is really good. They've uh, certainly shown some valid criteria for judgment. And I think again, we could uh, our judgment is going to be now are they are they good enough uh, in a sustained way to say that the relative significance of the criteria evaluated are they going to do the same evaluation or the same quality of evaluation through those three paragraphs we've already seen that it's generally well organized um, and in fact i would say that it's been communicated with clarity and precision so far again we'll judge whether the quality is sustained all the way through um, and then here again sustained is there sustained analysis well this first paragraph is really sustained uh, in, in the sense of like, oh, here's a significant thing, but it's not, uh, it didn't happen consistently there in China. And also this, but that didn't happen there. The whole, everything there is about explaining the argument. So great start. Um, let's have a look at this next paragraph and see whether this carries on. The permanent or at least emotionally damaging changes to societal structures were more significant than the destruction of traditions as there were huge human consequences and loss of life, which are always more serious consequences. So that's their rationale, their judgment for saying that this um, factor, uh, the damage to societal structures is a bigger deal than the destruction of traditional Chinese culture. In Yunnan alone, 19,000 cadres were executed. These are party workers cadres. And the cleansing the class campaign, class ranks campaign in 1968, uh, after the peace of destruction, led to over 100,000 deaths. Additionally, many of the Red Guards sent to be re-educated in the up to the mountains, down to the villages campaign, could never return home. Even after the Cultural Revolution ended, which uh, would have been devastating. So this is their evidence for saying they could never return home. That's affecting people's lives. Here, people died. Obviously, that affects their lives. That's, that's the argument here that, that um, the impact upon people's lives is bigger than the destruction, or more important than the destruction of the culture. Three million party cadres were sent to cadre school. Uh, which they completed hard labour and in addition to the pain from being separated from their families were often emotionally tormented. These social changes 
also affected the economy severely. In 1967, there was a 13 percent drop in industrial output. And the Red Guards sent to the countryside uh, would also have been unproductive. So that sounds a bit vague. Uh, affected the economy. Sorry. Unproductive. That sounds a bit vague, but this is something that is known. And not every piece of evidence that you can provide is going to have a factual, um, numerical, tangible quality to it. But you earn a little bit of uh, slack, I suppose. Like here, 100,000 deaths, 90,000 cadres, 3 million party cadres. Do they know their stuff? Yes. 13% drop in industrial output. Mm, very good. Here, where they say, well, this would also have been unproductive. They've kind of earned a slightly vague piece of evidence there. Um, and that's not going to, this isn't going to make their overall answer seem vague. Uh, this is just one last bit of evidence. The social changes also meant education came to a halt. So this is a uh, only 26 percent. In fact, that should really be uh, this is analysis and educate how society changed. Oh, education was changed. Emotions have changed. Um, the economy was devastated. People died. Um, people had to leave their homes. Only 26 percent had received education between the ages of 12 and 16. Uh, this would have been partially affected by the rejection of traditional culture as a third of libraries were closed. Oh, this is nice. So there's a bit of overlap here, um, which we like in here, the analysis of relationship between uh, key features. There we go. That's one there. It cannot be denied that uh, that's putting it strongly, isn't it? That loss of life is a more significant consequence than loss of historical objects. And the other consequences of the changing societal structures, such as emotional damage, are permanent and infinite. So this is trying to establish this uh, blue column here that the relative, the, sorry, the value criteria for judgment. Is that a valid criteria for judgment? Yeah, it's a well-reasoned, thought-through um, point that they're making, and they're making it very clearly. Is it substantiated? Yes, absolutely. They've got good evidence for it that people's lives were changed. Is the relative significance of the criteria evaluated? Yes, not uh, not in infinite detail, but they've said there that that the, the deaths of people and the the permanent changes to people's lives are more important than the destruction of things, which is a, a weighing up of two. So the third paragraph down here, one could also argue that the Cultural Revolution led to an increase in Mao's personal power as it allowed him to dismiss two thirds of the Politburo, including specific rivals such as well, crumbs, Liu uh, Xiaoqi and Deng Xiaoping. Um, also, his cult personality was increased through the widespread use and mass production of the Little Red Book and displays of loyalty. For example, switchboard operators were uh, had to answer the phone with the greeting, long live Chairman Mao. Despite this being extremely significant at a time, Mao died in 1976, and all of his power could have potentially been reversed. Um, or in fact, it wasn't all completely reversed immediately, but yes, um, it's true that he loses his personal power. So this is the argument here that he gains personal power. Does he gain personal power? Uh, it's kind of implicit here, I suppose, but he's getting rid of people in the Politburo. That's the top, like the cabinet of uh, of a communist country. He gets rid of rivals, his cult of personality. These are all, um, the Little Red Book was a collection of sayings by Mao that were used to kind of promote um, his ideas. Um, switchboard operators is another example of the cult. So uh, purge members were often rehabilitated. Oh yeah, so this is the evaluation. And um, why is it not so important? It's not so important because purge members were rehabilitated in, you know, in that they came back, um, including Deng Xiaoping, who went on to be made uh, vice premier in 1977. Okay, good. And then uh, finally, the the conclusion. So 
what we've seen through the essay so far, um, really good specific evidence. Um, I would say that they've responded fully to the demands of the question. There's not been a point that they've raised that has not had evidence attached to it. And almost all of the evidence has been really specific um, and uh, uh, factual, fact, very factually based. There's, there's one bit we picked up that seemed a bit vague, but everything else has been great. Has it been communicated with clarity and precision? Yeah, I would say it has so far, that, that they've really been very clear about the points that they've made and where they've wanted to evaluate things, that evaluation has shone through clearly. Has the relative significance of criteria been evaluated? Yes, they've said that um, the destruction was uh, was significant, but not as significant as the loss of life and, and uh, interruptions and changes to people's lives because that, that affects people rather than stuff. And they've said Mao's um, uh, personal power was significant, but it's limited in significance because he died in 1976 and therefore it's um, it runs out before uh, the other societal changes and then obviously deaths. Death is permanent. Uh, and then uh, finally over here, is there sustained analysis? Well, yeah, everything that they've brought in has been brought in to explain the argument that flows all the way through their answer. So what we're looking for here in the conclusion, often the conclusion can really make the difference between one grade and the next. But here in the conclusion, we're just looking for this to, again, to sustain um, the uh, the quality that we've seen so far. And we already know um, where this argument is going. So where it says here about it being a sustained analysis, um, uh, that has already been sustained. They don't need to try and make the case for it here. It's It's flowed through the essay. And we understand already, I think, what that conclusion is going to be. So um, what they're going to do here, hopefully, is recap and explain uh, one last time what that is. So here we go. Uh, the destruction of traditional Chinese culture was a major consequence of the Cultural Revolution as the loss of historical places uh, and religious places and artefacts um, would have an effect on generations of Chinese people. It proved that integral traditions remained and were remembered as shown in the reaction to Mao's death. Although Mao's increase in personal power was helpful for him and important in the short term, his illness and death soon led this to be unimportant. It cannot be denied that human loss of life, particularly in numbers as large as those of the Cultural Revolution, are extremely damaging emotionally for the entirety of the population and are therefore the main cause of the Cultural Revolution, main consequence of the Cultural Revolution. Oh, I can't believe it. There's three words left and they've messed up. So um, here uh, we've got exactly what we expected to get. And this is a thoughtful and clear uh, answer. It's not um, the most kind of packed with explanation, but in many ways it doesn't need to be because that uh, the hard work of that evaluation and evidencing has gone on before. And like I said, they're just recapping and explaining here. So I would say this answer, because of what we've seen, it's well organised, very well organised, um, really clear. The relative significance of criteria was evaluated. They were very clear about why that hierarchy existed of uh, destruction of Chinese culture being a little bit more important than Mao's personal power being re-established, but a little bit less important than um, the, the loss of human life and the societal changes. And they've sustained their analysis all the way through. There wasn't much overlap between the factors here, between the consequences, um, but that's a nature of uh, the particular consequences we're looking at. Um, and did they have enough knowledge to respond fully? Uh, yes, in the sense that everything that they talked about, um, which was enough, um, has uh, uh, was evidence that they had evidence for everything that they said. So I'd say this is a good example of a level five essay um, and probably uh, I would argue at the top of level five, uh, maybe sort of four marks if you did that in a, should be four marks if you did that in time conditions uh, without knowing what the question was first. Um, and um, and I hope that's useful to, for you to see how the mark scheme works and what it looks like running through an essay. Thanks so much. See you next time.